This is a special documentary on General Abdisalami Al Haji Abu Bakr at 80 years, the last Nigerian military head of state. Legend has it documented that the foundation of most nations with formidable might, strength, focus and direction were laid by the unrelenting hands of military generals. For instance, the United States will remember the darkness of George Washington at the Declaration of Independence and Dwight Eisenhower for his gallantry in the Second World War. The British cannot forget the bravery of Winston Churchill in defending its lot during the Holocaust. The French still revere the Kurd as made popular by Napoleon Bonaparte, and the Filipinos still have monuments erected for General Douglas MacArthur, the liberator of the East. These men have carved their names in the annals of time in serving God, King and Country. Nigeria's history is fraught with many tales of forbearance, determination and bravery. From its post-independence era, when the British had encounters with traditional institutions to the Nigerian Civil War and a return to democratic rule, several military figures have made sacrifices to pave the way for a united, formidable Nigeria. One of such figures that has carved his name on the foundational stone of Nigeria's democracy and proven to be an astute leader, a man of peace, and an officer and absolute gentleman is former military head of state, retired General Abdesalami al Haji Abu Bakr. Revered as a man who stood the gap and took the national political leap into the path of democracy, Retired General Abdesalami christened as Nigeria's last military head of state, made Nigeria cherished and admired by the global community when he handed over to a democratically elected president an action many Nigerians had doubted would be carried out due to past disappointments in the nation's quest for democratic rule. Born in Mina, Niger State, North Central Nigeria into a humble and devout Muslim family of Al Haji Abu Bakr al Jibrin and Haji Fachi Kandi Muhammad on the 13th of June 1942. General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr, for most of his life, lived in relative obscurity, but fate ultimately placed him on the path to service and greatness. He spent his childhood years in the community attending Wari Native Authority, now renamed IBB Primary School in Mina, between 1950 and 1956. He was my childhood friend. We grew up together. This is something we inherited from our parents. Our parents were friends, and we grew up to know that his father and my father were very good friends. So the that is that started the cultivation of friendship, extended to us. Well, the first part of my life, growing up among uh, colleagues, friends, uh, whom we grew together, people like His Excellency Ibrahim Batamaz Babangida, people like late uh, Babangida Sarkin Kaswa, Al Haji Sudati, and all the rest. Of course, like any young man, we grew up together exploring our environment. From 1957 to 1962, he attended the famous Bidda Provincial Secondary School, now known as Government College Bidda, graduating from the most famous class the school has ever produced with former Nigerian military president, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida GCFR, Major Generals Garuba Duba, Gadunasko, and Mohamedou Magoro as some of his classmates. Niger Provincial Secondary School, it accommodated students from various parts of this country. That was my first contact with General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr. Niger Provincial Secondary School had everything at that material time. We had almost 90% of expatriate teachers. 
He, we went to school together. We went to elementary school. We were classmates in elementary school, classmates in senior primary school, classmates in the secondary school too. And then friends generally because uh, we got to like ourselves, to understand ourselves, and we remain very close friends up till now. One of the first uh, the things that uh, somebody learned that uh, an individual is not an island into oneself. You must learn to live with society. You must learn to respect other people's view. You must learn also to respect other people's religious belief. And you must also, you will also learn that people are not equal. Young Abdul Salami enrolled at the Kaduna Technical Institute, now known as Kaduna Polytechnic, to read civil engineering, but later opted out for a career in the Nigerian military. Which metamorphosed into Kaduna Polytechnic. I started studying uh, uh, civil engineering. I was there for about six to nine months when suddenly I then joined the Nigerian military. Abdus Salami, who was imbued with patriotism right from his childhood, enlisted at the Nigerian Defense Academy and interestingly started out on the Air Force as a cadet. In 1963, the young cadet joined the newly established Sovereign Nations Military Forces as a candidate in the officer training program of the Nigerian Air Force at a flight school in Germany. Subsequently, the military authorities, based on prevailing exigencies, deployed him to the Defense Academy as an officer cadet in the combatant short service course too. During the Civil War, I, we were, some of us were converted and uh, transferred back to the Army. So that's why I remained in the Army. I grew through the ranks. Commissioned as Second Lieutenant in 1967, General Abdus Salami served in Lebanon as part of a United Nations peacekeeping force and commanded Nigeria's contingent of the United Nations peacekeeping troops in Lebanon in 1981. And our troops have done wonderfully well. We left a very good name in, in Lebanon throughout the operations. And of course, part of that good name must have been contributed by the actions and acts of General Salami himself when he was there. Not only for Nigeria, he worked for the peaceful settlement of governments in West Africa, in Africa, and even the United Nations tapped from his wisdom. I'm quite conscious of the fact that no number of words from me will be enough to describe the greatness and the answers of the man. General Abdus Salami, a thoroughbred infantry officer and astute and committed officer, had a 36-year career in the Nigerian army and rose to the rank of general in fortuitous circumstances in 1998. Considered extremely apolitical in an era of military governance in Nigeria, he held purely military positions and served variously as chief instructor at the Nigerian Defense Academy, principal staff officer, chief of policy and plans, and what seemed the pinnacle of his career, chief of defense staff. But fate saved the best for last and totally changed the course of his life. On the 8th of June, the then Nigerian head of state, General Sani Abacha, died in office and the Abdus Salami Abubakar phenomenon emerged. The erstwhile taciturn and apolitical chief of defense staff was thrust into the murky waters of politics following his emergence as Nigeria's head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It was a turbulent time in the history of the Nigerian nation. When he came in, he wanted to hand over in about four months. We set him down, told him Nigeria has been undergoing so many turbulent times. He need to spend between three and four years 
to get a stable civilian administration for this country. General Booker stood his ground, he said no. If he wanted to rule, he could have joined the military coups years before. It was the providence of God that he is here now. At the time, knowing his actions were closely being watched by the nation's civil and international community and will determine the boom or doom of his administration and summarily the entire nation, General Abdus Salami's decisions were strategic and critical. Having been sworn in like many other Nigerian military leaders, General Abdus Salami Abubakar promised to return the nation to civilian rule and established the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, amongst other relevant agencies that have continued to shape the developmental direction of the nation. So all the parameters were ripe for a civilian administration and takeover. Not only that, he wanted his military administration to be the last. Because is uh, our hurdle ahead of a military administration virtually running to hand over, not running to extend his tenure. It has never been done anywhere, but he did it. People were more than amazed and surprised, but he did it and he succeeded. And that has earned him a very good reputation internationally. He equally dissolved the political parties the late head of state, General Sani Abacha, had established and went for multi-party elections. Under his leadership, Nigeria saw tremendous political arrangements, which is up to this time working. He did not do a shady job. He did a job that would benefit his country, Nigeria. And after leaving office, you can justify, you can testify. He is still apolitical. He's not interested in party politics. General Salami Abubakar has shown and continues to show that any society that will be wholesome, that will be harmonious, must have peace reigning in that community. As promised, presidential elections were held and General Olusegun Obasanjo was returned as winner. He also slated May 29, 1999 as the swearing in date for the newly democratically elected president Olusegun Obasanjo. I, Olusegun Obasanjo, do solemnly swear of Nigeria. I think the fact that he successfully midwifed the transition to civilian rule, that was his crowning moment in his profession. As we celebrate a true leader in our continent, a visionary and an extraordinary man, I would like to applaud General on his role in uh, ushering Nigeria into democracy. He left the power and has not looked back, which was uh, unusual. In modesty and humility, General Abdul Salami subsequently returned to his country home in a Niger state. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who kept me this far. The good Lord has been very kind to me um, since childhood, up to the time I joined the military, and up to the time when the destiny brought me into the leadership of this country, which I'm now in a chairman. So you thank. You sit back and thank God and look at the life, how God has been kind. 
to all of us, especially me. God has been very kind and I'm thankful to him. Throughout his public career, General Abdesalami Abubakar displayed strong personal qualities that were obviously the driving force behind his ultimate accomplishment. This singular action ensured that history will forever be kind to him and elevated General Abdesalami Abubakar to the hallowed rank of great men who had played positive roles in building the nation. It was great, and this is all due to merit. He merited all the appointments he held during the public service. He was a very dedicated military officer, hardworking, and very, very loyal to the profession and to the nation. The world took notice of the efforts of General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr, both in and out of military service, and his feat has been celebrated around the world with recognitions, accolades, honors, and awards. contribution of President Abdusalami Abubakar in the advancement of peace building on the continent in general and his mediation activities on behalf of the African Union in particular. General Abdusalami Abubakar, your contribution to Nigeria has been tremendous in the army as well as in the political sphere. My view that in him we have a true Pan-Africanist, very concerned that our continent should unite and achieve its renaissance. Here we have an outstanding and humble African leader. I therefore felicitate with General Abu Bakr for his relentless efforts in resolving conflicts and ensuring peaceful coexistence across Africa. An Institute for Peace and Sustainable Development Studies was established in Mena, Niger State, the Niger State capital by the retired Nigerian Army General as a response to the need for innovative, effective and efficient Afrocentric conflict transformation and development methodologies. The institute was later renamed after the former head of state, General Abdusalami Abubakar, GCFR, as the founder and initiator who has had first-hand experience of war, thereby knowing the value of peace. The impact cannot be measured. It's great because passing through that institute had uh, a kind of opened my eyes to wider perspectives of complete resolution. Taking cognizance of what is going on in this country, we need such a body and then we need that kind of line of people who will sit up and stand up and reach out to those whom they think are involved in issues and sit down with them, discuss some things that are concerning the survival of this nation. In recognition of these efforts in fostering democracy, global peace and harmony, General Abdusalami Abubakar is actively involved in peace-building processes in many African countries and beyond. In his years out of office, General Abdusalami Abubakar has not only been drawn into the enviable circle of world statesmen, he is constantly consulted and referred to as an instrument of democratization. In the year 2000, he led the Commonwealth team to monitor parliamentary elections in Zimbabwe and was again in that country in 2002 in the same capacity with much work placed on General Abdusalami's credibility. He also served as a diplomatic envoy for Nigeria and taken up numerous charities concerned with the affairs of children and the less privileged. Behind every great man is a good woman. This has come to be exemplified in the life of General Abdusalami Abubakar. At the home front, it has also provided more time for his devoted better half, retired Chief Judge of Niger State, Justice Fatih Lami Abubakar, 
his children and religion, Islam. He's a sympathetic person. He accords me respect, which I think is very, very important. We, I see his, um, as a father, he loves his children. He cares about his children. He is a family man to the core, and that extends to his um, outside the nuclear family to the extended family. Fatih Abdul Salam, fantastic lady, quiet, unassuming, intelligent. And I'm sure the success that uh, General Abdul Salam is enjoying today is due to the contribution, the underground contribution, subterraneous contribution that came from Fatih, the wife, the mother of his children. As I age up, I keep praying for the country, for the children, for Nigeria to remain peaceful and prosperous so that our grandchildren and children unborn will now build upon uh, what we, we have done and what you will be, you'll be doing. He is a wonderful dad. Um, I do not wish for anybody else to be my dad but him because of all the values he has given to me. The discipline, the respect he has instilled in me towards everyone, not, let, not just um, family members, anybody I meet on the street. Um, he's given that values to me to respect each and every human being just the way I would respect anybody in the house. While giving his all to God, King and Country, the former head of state, retired general and statesman, General Abdul Salami Al Haji Abu Bakr, has also chosen to invest in his community. On his farm, milk is produced and made available at easily affordable rates to members of the public. Today, General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr has breasted the tape of the octogenarian age of 80 with many Nigerians cutting across all strata, ages, religion and creed, seeking his counsel in various spheres such as politics, security, military service and governance. He has demonstrated the kind of leadership we need in Africa for people, for peace, for prosperity. It's been a very long journey. I, and it's therefore a great pleasure for me that we are alive and he is healthy to be 80. And with my thanks, it's always good to God for his guidance and the gift of health and uh, joy that he has given him in uh, arriving at this age. He is still needed in the country and he is always prepared to offer his own services for the country and I wish him well, I wish him another 80 years. He's a person that encourages dedication to whatever you put, focus and um, if you are not truthful to the course then you'll never achieve it. So it's something that he has actually put in us. No leader, statesman, politician or serviceman that has listened to his counsel and not spoken of him in glowing terms. Indeed, his home state capital Mina, Niger State, North Central Nigeria, has kept faith with him and without doubt the world has become his stage. He still cannot rest. Of course, it's not as it used to be before, but he's not the kind of person who can just sit down and uh, not be involved in one thing or another. And therefore, I pray God Almighty will give him strength to continue in what makes him very happy. Nigeria is a blessed country. In all aspects, is it human resources, natural resources, and so on and so forth. And there is enough for everybody in Nigeria. And I'm hoping that uh, as we uh, proceed along, people will stop thinking about their region or their state 
I will be thinking about Nigeria, not their tribes or where they come from. This is my prayer uh, for the country.